Hey everyone, this video is going to be more on the casual side as I peel back the curtain and describe how I split up my time as a software engineer. If you are new to software engineering or if you're just curious on how I personally spend my time, this video is going to be for you. I'll talk about how I use AI in my workflow and I'll also give candid advice and strategies that I use to get two promotions within one calendar year to the point where now I'm a senior software engineer in tech. Stick around to the end of the video to figure out how much time I actually spend coding because I think it'll actually surprise you, but let's get right into it. So first off, I spend around 5% of my time actually just organizing my work. My company likes to use the software Jira, which typically just shows like my Kanban style board. I just mean that there are different tickets that have different statuses on them. So on the board that we use, for example, we have tickets that are to do and then they move on to in progress and then they might be internal testing, client testing, and then later on in production when the ticket's finally complete and already in production. Typically our sprints are around two weeks and we get new batches of tickets then, but because my engineering org is more on the front lines of all the issues that people face with our product. We also get tickets on a daily basis that get added to our sprint. So for us specifically, we never fully finish each sprint, but we are cranking out a lot of tasks and we're completing a lot of engineering work. We also try to label our tickets with story point estimates. This is just our way of actually tracking how complex a ticket is. And so when we add tickets to our sprint to begin with, we already know, okay, this is going to be a relatively straightforward ticket, or this ticket might need a little bit more investigation or might involve other team members. And then we can estimate the complexity based on every ticket. And then every two weeks when we're planning a new sprint, we pick up the different tickets that we expect to be working on over the next two weeks. Each engineer is different and with time, you kind of understand how many story point estimates you can pick up at any given sprint. I also like to leave some sort of bandwidth available for more urgent issues that pop up because there are certain areas of the code that I am more accustomed to and I know that I'm going to get some requests to look into more urgent issues and if I completely take up my bandwidth with tickets that are already on my board then it'll be tough to ever get what I need to get done. So in general this just means that I need to keep track of broader company projects that are going on and just make sure that I'm ready during any critical times. So around 15% of my time is spent recreating bugs. 99% of the time, bugs need to be recreatable in order to be actually fixable. What I mean by this is that if I can't actually see what errors are being produced or see what is wrong with the actual flow of what we're trying to do with our product, then there's no way I actually know where in the code something went wrong, except for those 1% of the time where maybe we know off the top of our head that, oh, this is an error in our middleware, for example, or it's an error in our telephony provider. But the vast majority of the time, the error is probably produced in our code and we have to actually know the steps to reproduce it to actually go down and solve whatever bug is happening. So in most software engineering companies, the product is deployed in different environments. What I mean by environments is that the code that you actually interact with is in production. And then we have staging right below that where we can actually test different implementations before pushing it to actual users where we can test things internally. Some other companies also have development environments or UAT environments where they can do even more testing of different features before they even put it into staging. And then there's local testing where my computer is running a local version of everything involved in the software, usually with some sort of Docker container where I can run things just locally, not affect anything else, and just run the code over and over again, continue to deploy it on my local system, and just test fast so I can fix the bugs as fast as possible. But sometimes the errors that we're facing are environment specific. So if it's just happening in production, for example, we need to make sure that we're testing in production and making sure that we're actually logging things correctly so that we can actually see what's going on in the code. But while also being cognizant of the things that we can log, right? If we're in production and we're using production data, then there are certain security things that we have to consider and we have to make sure that we can't, say, put any personal data or look into any encrypted messages 
for example. So for the vast majority of the time, I typically just test locally and in dev at first with fake test data to make sure that everything works end to end. And then we propagate that upwards. And even in when we get into production, we're probably going to use test accounts that were given to us that so we can later investigate those issues um, without affecting actual users. If that makes sense. So during this time of recreating bugs, I'm really just looking for that instance that was reported. I'm looking for, in our case, that time where our bot hung up on a user. And if I can recreate that and I can find what error caused that crash, then I'm able to fix the issue. So once I'm able to recreate a bug, about 30% of my time spent is in the actual troubleshooting phase of things. A lot of my troubleshooting time is actually spent creating an initial strategy because I don't want to put any wasted time in going down one algorithm versus another or trying to pull in different libraries or trying to pull in different teams. I need to make sure that the actual avenue that I'm going to go down is going to be one, worth my time and two, use the available tech stack in a way that doesn't break anything else. I have to think about things like, is this a non-code configuration error? Is this an outside API error with a vendor that we're using that provides API endpoints? Is this an issue that is in our code base? How deep in our code base is this located? Sometimes a reported bug isn't even a bug. It's a fundamental design feature of our actual product. And if we actually feel like this is something that we want to implement down the line, then we can put it on our roadmap and we can put it in, say, a future sprint and actually look into it then. But if the thing that's being reported isn't critical or isn't even a bug in the first place, then we won't chalk it up to something urgent that we have to hop on right now because there could be an unlimited number of requests that are in this flavor and it's up to our project managers and our leadership to figure out what direction we want to go with our product given the feedback. In this troubleshooting phase, I also have to figure out what teams have to be involved. Sometimes I have to go to the infrastructure team because they have levels of permission to actually change different configurations that have to be changed in order to accommodate these things. There are things that like allow lists and disallow lists where certain IP addresses are blocked um, from middleware provider to our product to the user. So we need to make sure that all of that is connected properly. And then the last thing with troubleshooting is really just setting expectations and making sure that everyone involved knows how complex this issue is, knows what other teams are involved, maybe what other companies or vendors are involved just to make sure that everyone's aligned with the timing of this situation and we're able to set expectations across the board and to our clients. So about 10% of my time is spent talking to key personnel. With managers specifically, I communicate with both my engineering manager and my project manager on pretty much a daily basis, always keeping them in the know of any issues that I'm facing, any people that I'm interacting with, any blockers that I'm experiencing with the different code that I'm involved with. This interaction typically happens in our daily stand-ups, but there's also different interactions that happen throughout the day, whether it's just a Slack message or a Slack huddle. And whenever something comes up, I'm always constantly communicating. I think this constant communication shows that you're showing initiative and it's a welcome site for any manager because they don't have to bug you for any updates. They know that they're always getting the up-to-date information. And for times where I'm not giving updates, they understand that I'm probably just going to be deep in the code and I won't be bothered. Sometimes I'm also getting on calls with company leaders like our VP of engineering, our VP of product, our chief product officer. These meetings happen less frequently, probably once a month or a couple times a quarter. These are ways for me to, on one side, get updates as to what direction the company is going product-wise, what strategies I should actually implement when I'm solving different issues. Like one initiative might be that we're focused on product growth so we don't want to shift attention to non-critical bugs or maybe a company does want to solve every bug as it comes through to show clients that we are proactive that we're willing to make changes fast those different company philosophies are fluid and can change from time to time and being aligned with the leaders of your company will just ensure that you're always aligned with them and whenever any promotions or raises come up they want the people that are aligned with their company vision more than people that divert and then sometimes i'm also interacting with 
either clients or middleware providers. Because we're a B2B startup, sometimes our clients have just technical questions or they're running into technical issues and I'll be able to hop on a Zoom call and just qualm any worries there. And with our middleware provider, it might be with technical people on the other side, with non-technical people on the other side, but either way, we're just making sure that we're on the same page and that we're going in the direction that they're expecting to. And sometimes we have to ask them to update endpoints and sometimes they have to ask us to update endpoints. Either way, that type of communication just helps make my life easier. So instead of just having, say, a constant email chain back and forth that might take a couple weeks to resolve. Okay, so now we actually get to coding. And with coding, I spend around 30% of my time. And within coding, I have to split my time between actually implementing the fix and testing. Once I have a plan of attack and once I figure out what strategy I'm going to use to actually tackle a problem, the actual implemented solution shouldn't be too many lines of code and shouldn't be too complex. I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but in trying to figure out a plan of attack of coding up a solution, I need to be cognizant of the tech stack that we're using, make sure that I'm not breaking any other parts of the system in any solution that I give. I can't just import any library across the board because there might be incompatibility issues or security vulnerabilities. I need to make sure that I'm making an efficient solution that also blends well with our current tech stack. And this is where AI has really been game changing for me and has really upped my productivity in ways that I couldn't have even imagined. Because now with AI tools like GitHub Copilot, which basically just helps me code faster. I've been able to implement fixes so much faster than before. I used to spend a lot of time reading up issues on Stack Overflow, trying to validate errors that I'm seeing, make sure that I'm implementing an efficient solution. But now with GitHub Copilot and it auto-completing my code, it can get the context of the rest of the file that I'm working with and suggest something that is efficient, that does work pretty much every time, right? Right off the bat. And if there are issues, of course, I have the background to actually test those issues and probably have to just fix one variable or another and usually a solution gets put in place pretty quickly. So now when I have a strategy, I can really just start coding. And as I code, GitHub Copilot usually does a pretty good job of just auto-completing and finishing my thought out in ways where I used to have to look at documentation, cross-reference it, and then code a line and then go back and forth. Now I can tab complete and it usually just does a pretty good job on the first try. And then I get to testing. Testing is really big for me because I think the fastest way to implement any sort of real solution as a software engineer is just to have quick iteration and quick testing. You can theorize for hours a day and figure out this brilliant solution that once you actually execute just won't work. Or you can just keep trying different solutions. Of course, they have to be efficient and of course you already had a game plan beforehand, but you can keep trying different solutions, test them and make sure that you know, you're not breaking anything more than the bug solving fixed. You can just iterate fast and with proper testing, you can make sure that you're not breaking any other aspects of your code base. And to ensure that you're not breaking other aspects of your code base, it's always important to think about any edge cases that may arise with your implemented fix and to also make sure to test in different environments like I mentioned earlier. So if something works in locally, you have to also make sure it works in dev staging and ultimately production. So if you're keeping tabs, everything that I've described up to this point accounted for 90% of my time. The last 10% of my time I spend actually deploying the fix that I've created. I work in an industry where our customers really rely on the reliability of our actual code. So I need to make sure that any fix that I put out doesn't negatively affect them because I can affect real money down the line and real user experiences that can be very detrimental if those issues arise again. So even after I implemented a solution that I think was foolproof, even after I tested in various environments, I need to make sure that in the end, in production, end to end, everything works as expected. And so whenever I have access to things like 
test accounts, I make sure to test it on our end. And we also have teams of people who actually spend time making sure that these scenarios are tested again. And we make sure our client also tests the solution before we release them out to the users. And when it's time to actually deploy to production, depending on the amount of code bases that I had to interact with, there are different pipelines that need to pass um, validation steps. We have our CICD pipelines that ensure that the app is built properly, that we are passing this different unit tests that we have in place, the different validation security vulnerabilities that we have in place. And depending on how many code bases that I've interacted with, I need to make sure that all of those pipelines are successful in order for what I'm deploying to actually deploy to production. And sometimes these pipelines do take a decent amount of time to run. If I'm working with say three or four different code bases, I'm just monitoring those pipelines throughout the day. And if anything goes wrong, I can contact infrastructure or the DevOps teams and make sure that those pipelines just get pushed along so that I can meet the deadlines that I've created for myself or that were created from the client. And throughout this whole process, as I'm deploying my changes to different environments and as they move up the chain of local dev staging and ultimately production, it's my job to relay the different statuses to the different stakeholders involved. Sometimes we're currently testing and staging so that fix won't be in production. So there shouldn't be an expectation that that fix is already in production. They need to make sure when each specific environment is solved for. Okay, so now I've talked about 100% of my time that I spend as a senior software engineer in tech. If you have any questions, make sure to put them down below and I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. If you made it to this part of the video, thank you a lot and comment down game changing if you made it this far so that I know the real ones out there that watch my channel. As always, stay positive, stay inspired, and I'll see you in the next one.